Hey, it's Professor Golden. In this lecture, we're going to talk about DNA technology and bioengineering. And you may be wondering, what does that have to do with a goat? Well, we're going to come back to this goat, but we're going to talk about how genetic engineering can do things like create a goat that makes antibiotics in its milk. I know, cool, right? Okay, so first let's get some uh, terms down. Uh, genetic engineering is the direct manipulation of genes for some sort of practical purpose. So any time that we directly change the alleles, the genes, in a chromosome, whether it's a bacterial cell or a frog cell or a human cell, that's genetic engineering. Recombinant DNA is the DNA from different sources combined into a single molecule. Now, um, we're going to talk about several different ways that scientists can recombine DNA. One of those is by adding a gene to a bacterial chromosome. One is by uh, using a virus to add DNA to a eukaryotic chromosome. There's a bunch of them. Anytime we do that, anytime we take DNA from one source, either in a living organism or a virus, and put it into another source, either a living organism or a virus, that's recombinant DNA. And then the organisms that have that recombinant DNA are genetically modified. Now, most genetically modified organisms that you're familiar with or that you think about as genetically modified have been produced by genetic engineering but it could be genetically modified by any artificial means, including by a really old uh, technique is just to zap plant seeds with x-rays and then plant the seeds and see what happens. We've gotten some really uh, interesting foods by this method and you've eaten them. Um, so not all genetically modified organisms are the result of genetic engineering. Any organism that has a gene from another organism, that is any organism that has recombinant DNA, is considered transgenic. Okay, and that's usually what we think about when we think about genetically modified organisms. We're going to come back to genetically modified organisms at the end of this series of lectures. Okay, so let's talk about one of the oldest uh, techniques for genetic engineering, and it actually uses bacterial DNA. Remember that bacteria have one chromosome. This is actually what the chromosome looks like. It's one circle, but it's really long. A lot of bacteria have actually another little bit of chromosome, of DNA, excuse me, that's called a plasmid. It's just a tiny little circle of DNA, might contain a few genes. Uh, it's much smaller than the bacterial chromosome. This is going to be duplicated whenever the cell duplicates, and whatever genes are on this plasmid can be expressed. Uh, but the other thing about these plasmids is that bacteria can actually share them with each other. So they do this through something called conjugation, which is a form of bacterial sex. So here's a one bacterial cell that has a plasmid, and here's another bacterial cell that does not have a plasmid. The donor cell can stick out this thing called a pilus. And here's one here. This is, um, a, I think, electron micrograph of two uh, bacteria, one that has lots of cilia on it, one that doesn't. Um, and it's sticking out a pilus. And these two have connected through this pilus. So the, the two cells connect. And then the donor cell, um, copies the plasmid and the copy of the plasmid is moved into the recipient cell and now both cells have that plasmid both can make the pilus now if the plasmid carried the gene for the pilus but whatever genes are on this plasmid are also going to be expressed in this new cell which brings us to this cartoon. Here's a couple <laughs> of uh, bacterial cells. And this one's saying, don't pick it up, I say. And he says, it's just a plasmid. What harm could it do? And just look at him now. God knows what protein he's expressing. So that this one has picked up a plasmid, and now it's expressing some new surface protein.
Okay, so in the uh, Concepts of Biology textbook, they walk through how uh, this foreign DNA, how DNA can be inserted into a plasmid so that the, new, the bacterial cells can pick it up. Um, and I'll walk you through really quickly, but I posted a video in Canvas and there's a link here that explains this much better than I can and just does a really clear job of explaining this. But essentially what uh, biologists do is they take a piece of DNA with the gene that they want to have expressed in bacterial cells at the end. And they cut it out from the DN, from that DNA. They cut out the gene using something called a restriction enzyme, which is a, an enzyme that bacteria have to destroy viral DNA. The most common one cuts at this site, GGATCC, and then they cut the plasmid with the same restriction enzyme. That leaves the new gene and the plasmid with the same overhanging ends, which we call sticky ends, because of course they're gonna want a complementary base pair with something exactly the same, and so they're gonna stick together. This technical term is sticky ends. Uh, and then they put the plasmids with the other DNA, mix them together with a, an enzyme DNA ligase that helps to glue the uh, sugar phosphate backbones of DNA back together. Some of the plasmids take up the gene that the scientists wanted them to take up. Some of them don't, because you never know. This is just random which plasmid bumps into the right thing. So then the scientists grow the bacteria, all the bacteria, whether they've taken up the plasmid or not. Or, sorry, first they mix the gene with the plasmid, then they mix the plasmids with bacteria, and some of the bacteria take up the plasmid. They don't have to use this conjugation to do that. Bacteria can actually just soak up plasmids that are in their environment. Like if a bacterial cell just bumps into a plasmid, it can, some of them can just take that up through their plasma membrane. It's very weird. Okay, so some of the bacteria take up the plasmid that we want. And then the scientists grow the bacteria on a, an agar plate, a petri dish with agar, which is just a jelly. And um, that jelly has nutrients and sometimes an antibiotic. And if the bacteria have taken up the right plasma, plasmid, then they'll be able to grow on whatever that medium is. And then they are transgenic, meaning that this bacterium has a gene from something else. Now this sounds really wackadoodle and uh, very sci-fi, but the reason that this works is because this is something that bacteria do naturally. Bacteria can take up DNA from their environment. And in fact, that's one way to insert a gene into bacteria is just to directly mix the bacteria with a gene that's been cut out or something else. They'll just take up the DNA, which to me is hugely creepy, but it's a thing that you can actually do. It, I've done it in a, a biology lab with students. So it's, yeah, I know, crazy, right? Anyway, so the fact that, by, that bacteria have this mechanism that they do naturally means that scientists could just make this happen uh, by hijacking or using that mechanism that bacteria already had. Okay, once we've got this mechanism, then we can use it for a lot of different things. So one thing that uh, scientists do is they insert plasmids into bacteria and then have those bacteria grow. And then the bacteria will express a protein, for example, will make a specific protein. So one of the enzymes that's used to make genes look stonewashed um, is actually harvested from genetically engineered bacteria. One of the proteins that's given to heart attack patients to dissolve um, blood clots uh, it is harvested 
from genetically engineered bacteria. And this is a protein that is naturally occurring. We've just inserted it into bacteria to get them to make it for us. Okay? Now, if you can insert a gene into one organism, you can find a way to insert the gene into other organisms as well. Um, some, in some cases, you can get the bacteria to do something, which is uh, we have a bacteria that cleans up toxic waste by like eating oil that's been spilled from oil tankers. Um, and then we have, we now have methods for inserting genes, not just into bacteria, but into eukaryotic organisms. And so we can insert genes into things like plants to make the plants resistant to pests or resistant to pesticides or herbicides. And there's another video uh, on our Canvas page that show that talks about some of these techniques um, and about uh, how uh, genetically modified organisms work. I'll talk about that a little more later, and uh, I want you to watch that video uh, to learn more about that. Um, for now, let's talk about how scientists figure out that a, that, uh, a gene has been taken up or how they compare two different types of DNA. And this is by doing something called PCR and then gel electrophoresis. PCR is a method for making a bunch of copies of a target piece of DNA, and I've got some videos in the Canvas um, page to show you how that happened. Gel electrophoresis is a method that, again, we can do in a classroom. It's a really easy method. You take some DNA, you mix it with a restriction enzyme so that it's cut into different pieces. And because the restriction enzyme cuts at specific sections of DNA, all the DNA that's the same is going to be set, sorry, cut into pieces that are the same length. So different DNA is going to be cut into sections of different lengths. So you take your DNA and you put a little sample of it on, an, again, an agar gel in this special machine that can run electricity through it. And then you run electricity through it. Well, the DNA um, molecule is negatively charged. And so DNA runs toward the positively charged end of the agar gel. And then the pieces of DNA move at different rates based on how big they are, because bigger pieces are heavier and move more slowly. It's that simple. The shortest pieces are lighter and they move faster and they move farther. And so the pieces separate with the longest DNA fragments closer to the wells where they started and the shorter fragments farther away. And so then you can compare pieces of DNA. And if you're looking, say, for one specific gene and you know how long it is, then you can see that all three of these fragments have that same piece of DNA. This is what a gel actually looks like when it comes out of the machine. Um, and you can see that we've got pieces of DNA that appear to match from these different samples. And so that's how we tell that DNA uh, either comes from the same source or that a specific sample of DNA has taken up a specific gene. We cut them all with the same scissors and then see if they've got pieces the same size. All right, in this next section, I'm gonna talk about a couple other techniques we can use genetic engineering for, including green fillers and protein, which is just one of the coolest things around.